Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella Reed, this is my channel I Love Reads, and today we are reading I Still Think You're Beautiful on Wattpad, and today we are reading chapter 19. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoy, like, subscribe, comment. Um, also, the marriage uh, heart Supper fan fiction is out today also, so go check that out when you're done here. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, um, the other Nick and Charlie fan fiction will be out again soon, so keep that in mind. Um, and then, damn it, what else? Um, like, subscribe, comment, um, whether it's recommendations or whether it's just saying hello. Anyway, let's jump right into the video. Chapter 19, Draco. I was walking from my ancient runes lesson as I ran into Harry, who was looking drunkenly happy. We nearly crashed into each other as he turned the corner. Oh, hi, Draco. You all right? He swayed into me, nearly falling over. I should be asking you that, Harry. What's gone into you? He stopped swaying and leaned against the wall, sighing dramatically. Harry? Oh, nothing. I'm just in a really good mood. Why can't I be happy? He grinned stupidly at me. Okay, then. How was the ladies? I asked. Fine. I learned quite a bit. I think so, anyway. He looked at me, as he couldn't quite remember, and then grabbed my arm and pulled me down the corridor. What lesson do we have now? Divideation? He nodded and slowed down a bit as we walked up the stairs hand in hand. Are you sure you're okay, Harry? I'm fine, he said with a smile, and we walked into Professor Trelawney's classroom. She was smiling until she saw Harry walk, walk in. She probably gonna predict my death again, he chuckled into my ear, but I'd noticed the sparkle leave his eyes, his, and his smile dropped. Sit, my children, sit. Trelawney's said to us. Me and Harry sat opposite each other at a small table. Today we will be doing the part of palm ministry. I say today when in reality we do this all the time. Reading people's emotions and their hands to get an insight on what they are or will be feeling. Now open your books and briefly read page 78 to 80. Then close your books and get to work. Me and Harry studied our textbooks, and I began to read his palm. It was a load of shit, really, and I didn't believe any of it, though sometimes it was correct. Well, it says you're going to have a difficult time with something. I don't know. I said, looking at his palm and back to the book. When haven't I? He giggled. It also says an argument will be resolved and all will be well. This is stupid. He nodded and smirked at my annoyance. My turn, he said, grabbing the book from my hand. Okay, well, you're going to be happy. Hopefully your hair will be perfect and you will go on a date with me tonight at 11. He said in a rush, barely even able to read his book. He looked at me and smiled, waiting for the penny to drop. Smooth, Potter. Really smooth. Fine, I'll come, I said, grinning. But be serious. I can't fail any of my classes. Salazar knows I need good grades. He nodded solemnly and read the book slowly. All right, all right. It does say you'll be joyful, but fearful, too. But not for you, for someone else. You'll be brave. He smirked at me again. He looked so cute. His hair tossed and his nose scrunched underneath his glasses. I couldn't help but smile back. And that's it? What, no death protections? Am I a bit disappointed? Me too, he said. And I lightly punched his arm. We recorded our results. And... Trelawney came over to us. We have some... What have you subdued, boys? She asked us as we passed her our notes. Good, good. She
She lightly brushed Harry's hand as she passed him his work. Her eyes went white and her face raspy. A close one among you. Do not trust. Be careful. Be cautious. Resolve what you have lost. Do not regret. He will be avenged. She coughed and smiled at us. The rest of the class oblivious to her little show. Harry looked at me, completely pale. I tried my best to reassure him. Harry, don't believe what she says. It's all a little bollocks anyway. I held his hand in mine. She hasn't been wrong before, he said quietly. Well, there's a first for everything, I said in a cheerful as I could. We gathered our books and quills and left the gloomy classroom behind. I linked my arm in Harry's and led him to the Great Hall for some lunch. At lunchtime, the Great Hall usually wasn't occupied as that many students, as some ate lunch elsewhere. So Harry and I both sat at the Slytherin table. I dug in as Harry meekly nibbled at a sandwich, focusing on everything and nothing at the same time. It was like he was on drugs or something. His eyes kept darting around. I dropped my fork and rested my hand on his forehead. It was burning hot. Harry, you're boiling. What have you taken? He snapped out of his trance and looked at me, shocked. What do you mean? He asked. You're acting like you're high. He looked straight at me, his eyes bloodshot. I grabbed his face. His pupils were twitching like crazy. Did someone slip something into your breakfast? Not that I know of. I feel fine. Draco, better than fine. He dropped his sandwich. I'm going to bed. I stood up. He stood up and stumbled backwards. I caught him just before he hit the floor. He giggled again. I wasn't finding this particularly amusing. Potter, let me take you. He looked at me, hurt in his eyes. Why did you call me Potter? Don't you like me anymore? I knew this was going to happen. I led him out of the great hall as he carried on rambling. Harry, Harry, look at me. I looked into his eyes, green and red, dancing through tears. I love you, okay? Nothing will change that, okay? Okay? He nodded, and I pulled him down the hallway towards the eighth year's dormitory, ignoring his useless, drunk complaints. He wandered in, and my eyes darted to the occupied sofa. Blaze and Neville were both sat on the floor. Their backs against the sofa, Neville's head rested on Blaze's shoulder. We both asleep. I smiled, happy for my friend. I was distracted by this until Harry grunted and I carried on leading him upstairs and pushing him on his bed. I pulled his shoes off and his shirts, revealing his utterly res resistible body. He rolled over and snuggled into the blanket. My gasp nearly woke him up as I saw what was on his back. Chapter 20 Harry When I woke up, my head was banging, and I felt like I had a hangover, but I was still kind of drunk. I groaned and slowly unglued my eyes. I looked around, realizing that this was the first night in a long, long time that I hadn't woken up screaming. This filled me with some form of hope. The room was still quite dark, but I could tell that it was later than I usually woke up. I grabbed my wand and cast a tempest. Yep, it was 4.20. I scrambled back of my mind to try and remember yesterday. Going to Zelaney's, sitting down, getting my books out. After that, it's all a blank until I ran into Draco. Oh, Merlin. And then there was Trinsley's weird outburst and my weird outburst. Godric, save me. I was beginning to feel quite uncomfortable wearing my school trousers, so I took them off, my temperature rising as I lay in my underwear on top of my sheets. It felt like I was burning inside and out. I bit my tongue to not wake Draco. Then I had an idea. 
I grabbed my invisibility cloak, covered my unclothed body. I ran to Moaning Murdo's bathroom and stuck my head under the ice-cold shower, feeling instantly soothed. Hello, Harry, the ghost said, popping up from the U-bend. I smiled at her. She was eyeing my bolt my bandage. What happened to your arm? Me. She nodded. Fair enough. Why are you in your underwear? She giggled. Hey, Merle, I'm taken, and I was feeling hot, so I couldn't sleep, and I didn't want to wake Draco. I leant against the wall, letting the cold water run down my stomach. Taken by Draco, I presume. My smirk sent her squealing and wailing. She floated around the toilet. You're both so cute. Anyway, Myrtle, it was nice to catch up, but I really should be getting back. She nodded and floated away. Another ghost caught my eye. Colin. Colin gravely. He didn't say anything. He just flashed his camera at me and waved while I stood there in a state of shock, anger, and sadness. I slid the invisibility cloak on my body and ran out of the bathroom, running through another ghost, Cedric, in his tri-wizard cup uniform, and another Tonks, another Ramus, Fred, Mad, I. I made it out to my dorm, and I ran through my parents. I was completely freaking out. Once inside, I tore the cloak off and opened my window, sitting by it, resting my boiling head on the cold cobblestone. It was like a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from. At some point, I must have succumbed to sleep, as a few hours later, I was being shaken awake by a blonde-haired git. I groaned. Hallucinations and four hours of sleep don't do not do for anyone. Hey, Harry, we need to talk. Uh, okay. Be calm. He said he loves you yesterday. He would not dump you that quickly. Would he? I sat up and yawned, greeting him with a tired smile. Morning, babe. I said cheerfully, trying to listen to the vibes Draco was giving off. Harry, have you seen your back? I looked at him puzzled. What is he going on about? Apart from a few freckles of my back, as far as I knew, I was okay. What are you on about, Draco? My back? He nodded and pulled me out of bed. I still wobbled, unable to walk properly. Come see. He led me to the mirror. As I turned around and craned my neck from my shoulder blade downwards to my waist was a vein-like scar. A bit like the lightning bolt on my forehead. What the heck? I started. I've never noticed this before. I ran my hand down what I could touch. The old scar tingled under my skin. Draco did the same, moving his hand quickly up my back. His touch sting as I winced in pain. Ow! What? You touched it. It started to sing. Re oh, sorry. He felt my forehead again. It's okay. Harry, you're boiling. Are you sure you're not ill? He turned to face me. I couldn't concentrate on anything. I was all out of focus. He put his hand on my forehead again. Draco, I'm fine. I should see Madame Pomfrey about my back. See if she has any ideas. Come with me? He nodded. Sure, let's get dressed then. I didn't bother with a shower and shoved on some clothes. Draco grabbed my sweating hand, his cold in mine. We walked down the steps and into the common room. Blaze and Neville were both sat on the sofa, talking as if they had been friends for years. Morning, I said, and they greeted both ba of us back. Draco and I walked out of the portrait hole and quickly made our way to the hospital wing. On our way, we passed Professor Zang. Zelaney. Ah, Mr. Potter, I need to see you today after the lesson for our next session. Stay behind afterwards? He said as we strolled down the classroom. Yes, Professor. 
We soon made it to the hospital wing and explained to Madame Pomfrey my situation. I took my top off and smirked at Draco as he stared at my stomach. Just like Draco did, she traced the scars on my, on my back, muttering a few spells. Potter, I think it is from when Voldemort tried to kill you in the Forbidden Forest. Just like before, you didn't die, you only got a scar. Except much larger, she said. It's unhealable. Sorry. She patted my shoulder and went to see her other patients. It's cool. I kind of like it anyway, I said to Draco. Me and Draco stalked to Transfiguration together. I gave him a smirk every so often, along with a kiss. We sat down, and the lesson began. It went quite quickly, and Draco told me he would meet me in the Great Hall with Pansy and Blaze. Once everyone had left, the tutoring began. Zelaney boiled the kettle, but didn't touch his cup. I don't remember much of the lesson, but when I walked out a few hours later, I saw the ghosts again. The people who haunt my nightmares had crossed through to reality. I tried to ignore them. No one else could see them. My feet wobbled as I made my way to the Great Hall to find Draco. He'd know what was happening. My mouth was dry and my vision was fading. I leant against the wall for support, the castle spinning. In the distance, I could hear someone asking me if I was okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. But no words came out. Then suddenly, everything was black. Alright, everyone. That is the end of today's episode. I'm sorry for leaving you on a cliffhanger, but... I, I don't know. Um, I hope that you come back for the next one to try and figure out what's going on. Um, the next chapter is chapter 21. Um, that's very exciting. Can you believe that we're already in the 20s? That's crazy. Um, but anyway, um, like, subscribe, comment down below, whether it's commenting hello or whether it's just saying recommendations. I would love to talk to you guys. Um, anyway, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye, friends.